Welcome back to the gun bench. So, just looking at this gun, you're like, wait a second, we've looked at something like this. We looked at a few guns like this, but I promise this is something that is slightly different. So this gun is a Philadelphia Arms Company shotgun. So me being from Pennsylvania, I have an affinity for things made here. And not many guns were made in Philadelphia, especially side-by-side -side shotguns. This is one of the uh, only shotguns made in the 20th century here in Philadelphia. So the Philadelphia Arms Company was incorporated in 1902. It was incorporated by our good friend Ainsley H. Fox. We've already done some videos. We know a little bit about his history, but this predates the A.H. Fox Gun Company. So this was the predecessor to that company. Everything where these guns were made essentially just became A.H. Fox. So there, there isn't too much difference there. However, there are some key differences in the gun itself, which we'll take a look at in a moment. But just for a brief history of the Philadelphia Arms Company, it was incorporated in 1902. Um, there was a new patent that Ainsley H. Fox uh, presented that is what helped launch the gun company. They looked at a different cocking system. They had some ejector ideas as well that were patented. The fastening system here is very similar to Elsie Smith. He doesn't really do much with that. But in any case, the 1902 patent is what helped launch this and allowed him to get the capital to run the company. He partnered with DuPont. So DuPont, if you have any history of like gunpowder, the same DuPont. Um, Philip DuPont was his vice president. Fox himself was the president of the company. These guns were made in Wayne Junction in Philadelphia. Now, the, the odd thing about these guns made by Philadelphia Arms Company, there aren't a ton of records. We know that they were made from like 1904 to 1905, I know they're made in Philadelphia. Uh, we know for sure that they had 28, 30, or 32-inch barrels. We know that there are a few different grades of the guns. However, some of the things offered, there are no uh, extant examples of them. So there's A grade, B, C, D, E, F. There's also an H um, grade. However, there aren't, I, I think there's nothing known, just looking at the internet and also reading through the A.H. Fox book here by Macintosh. Um, there's not really any guns really known to be above E, the E grade, I believe. Um, I think DuPont was one of the owners of an E grade. But these, uh, these guns, they are very, very similar to the later Fox guns. There's some key differences. We'll look at those. But if you take a look at this, this is a working man's gun. You can tell the checker in here, nothing special at all. A piece of wood on this thing. Not special at all. Still in good shape. Um, there are some areas where there's some gaps. Somebody at some point did some homemade repairs on here. I may or may not fix it up myself at some point. But there's no major cracks in the stock. The gun has pretty tight, solid bones. Um, the timing here is not correct. But I'm not too boogered up or anything. But take a look at this floor plate. If you notice something here... I actually have another Fox gun. Let me slide it into the frame. This is a pin gun made a few years after this. So this gun was made in like 1904, 1905, somewhere in there. This pin gun was made five, six years later. You'll notice the floor plate of the Philadelphia Arms guns are different than the floor plate of the AH Fox guns. Now they still both have the exposed um, hinge pin here. So let me flip this over so we can take a slightly better look. You still have the border engraving, very similar to the engraving you find on the early Sterling Worth guns. You have the undressed hinge pin. You have simple scroll work. It's, it's, it's elegant for being simple. Uh, just right here around the rounded hinge pin. And uh, again, this is essentially, this is this is like a Parker just it screams Parker, right? So you have an undressed hinge pin. You have this rounded frame here. Um, some of the lines here are very similar to what we see a little bit later with the Fox guns. So let me pull this pin gun down just so you can see some of the similarities. So with the pin gun, the Sterling Worth, you'll notice that it's not quite as rounded. Um, 
It still has the undressed hinge pin, but the, the screw slot is much more visible there. Floor plates are slightly different. Checkering patterns are similar. It looks like there's more lines per inch here. Now this was just in better shape. It was actually touched up by Buck Hamlin. This gun is, I believe, untouched uh, restoration wise. There is still actually some case color left on this, shockingly. But looking at the lockups, the lockups, mind you of LC Smith a little bit. Yeah, pretty much. Oh, by the way, um, before you go crazy, I keep snap caps in these. But uh, the lockups, very similar. There's actually a little more border engraving on this, but they lost this, this scroll work. Um, around the uh, the pin here. Now, we take a look here. Again, this is the bottom of the barrel of the Philadelphia Arms. This is the bottom of the barrel of the um, Fox Gun Company. But we actually have a normal release here, a little higher end compared to what we have on our pin gun, which is just held by spring tension in there. But the guns are very similar, very similar. There are some key differences. One of the biggest differences here being there's only one screw in the floor plate there, three here. Internally, they're a little different as well. Not a ton. Um, they're both made with the Krupp fluid steel barrels. So the uh, the grading system for uh, the Philadelphia Arms, A through H. Above C, you could have Damascus. I don't know if there's any examples of Damascus barrels out there, but... Most of the guns are 12 gauge. I think all of the guns known to exist are 12 gauge. You can get sub gauges in the Fox guns. But the Philadelphia Arms was a very brief, um, a really brief chapter of A.H. Fox's life. He resigns from the company kind of abruptly, and the company kind of just transitions into A.H. Fox uh, Gun Company. There's, like, the guns look very similar. So let me let me pull something else here on my bench behind me. I have a graded Fox, also just a few years after this. Uh, again, looking at this, obviously the piece of wood here is a little different. The wood's significantly nicer. You have more checkering. But not much has changed. So you still have, you start to dress the hinge pin. You still have that rounded frame, though. Uh, floor plate is the same as the pin gun. You have a little sharper... Uh, a little sharper scallop here than you do on your Philadelphia Arms gun or even your pin gun. Actually, can I get all three of these in the frame? Might be able to. There we go. All three are in the frame there. So looking at the Fox guns, the evolution of the Fox gun, this would be the, the Philadelphia Arms. They're not in correct chronological order here. Um, here is our pin gun. Here's a B-grade uh, Fox gun. Now, this gun in particular, I got it pretty cheap. It, the barrels, something happened with the barrels on this. I don't know what. Um, I don't know what the original length was. My guess is they were 28. So the uh, barrels came in 28, 30, 32. Best as people know. These things are 26 and an eighth. So strange, strange barrel length. So they're probably, um, they've probably been cut. Thing still shoots really well. I enjoy using it. I can break clays with it, hunt with it pretty well. But the gun's been pretty unmolested in general. I mean, it's beat. It was a cool gun, and it was only uh, not too many Benjamins. It's cheaper than a pin gun, which, and a pin gun, for whatever reason, is cheaper than a Sterling Worth. Uh, these are some quality guns. I don't know why they don't get the respect they deserve. But this is just a small chapter in the Philadelphia Arms, or in the A.H. Fox, uh, just history. And this company again two-ish years they were around they were incorporated in 1902 made guns for about two years and then they immediately went into making the fox guns the ah fox guns same probably the same parts probably the same frames same barrels there's a weird no one the historians don't really know why there was that transition but the fox guns uh showed up a little bit later so here we have three examples of Philadelphia Fox guns. I wasn't planning on having all three of these over at the same time, but since we do, here they are. 
at some point, I'd love to get a Baltimore Arms to see uh, the period before Philadelphia Arms. But yeah, this is a, just a real brief chapter in A.H. Fox's life, a real brief company here in Philadelphia, here in Pennsylvania. But again, looks like the Parker. You'll tell, like, look at the, the hinge pin here. Like, this is this is a pretty well-made gun, right, for the time. you Even on this low grade, you have a really nice, you just have nice attention to detail, even for this low-graded gun. All that border engraving there. They're a solid gun. It's a good shooter for me. Uh, I've hunted with it well. You notice it says Fox there. There are some, I believe, that don't have anything there at all. Uh, they're even earlier. But cool little chapter from uh, American gun history. Cool chapter of the Fox saga in side-by-side uh, -side shotguns. And at the time, for the money, for the quality of the gun, for how they hold up. Like These, these were phenomenal guns. Phenomenal guns. So I'm happy to own this. I'm happy to be the custodian of it for now. I'll be taking it out. I'll probably clean the stock a little bit. I'm not going to do anything drastic to this. Um, just real gentle cleaning with it. I'm not going to re-blue the barrels or anything. It'll stay the way it is, and it'll be a shooter. I might fix what some previous owner here did, make it a little nicer. But I'm not going to do too much to it. It's just a fun example and a good example of just an American side-by-side -side made here in Philadelphia. So I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you like seeing some of the differences here. At some point, maybe I'll do a video where we see Philadelphia Arms, we see Fox Guns, Baltimore Arms, if I ever get one. Uh, maybe a Savage Era when they bought out um, H Fox. Maybe a Savage Era, Sterling Worth or something. Um, and I will do a, a video on this gun eventually. This is a, a B grade. So not a Fox Model B, but a B grade Fox. This was also made in Philadelphia. So these are three guns made in Philadelphia. Made in the same factory. Um, but this is a Philadelphia Arms and the two AH Foxes. You can kind of see some of the similarities here, some of the differences as well. But it's just a cool period of American side-by-side -side shotgun development from the wonderful man, Ainsley H. Fox himself. Again, if you don't have this book, you should definitely get it, especially if you are interested in foxes at all or American gun making history. So until next time, keep these old girls alive. Remember, we're just the custodians for them. I'm going to try to hand these down to the next generation so they still have these pieces of history to use. So until next time, see ya.